I really liked it. Susan, thank you for being here. Um, this question is for Jeff. What specific documentary filmmakers and or documentaries influenced the style of your documentary? I guess that's a good question for Vicky as well. Yeah, I, I like to reference uh, The Hour of the Furnaces uh, by Solanas and I am Cuba, soy Cuba. Um, you know, these are, these are documentary films that sort of confront you with big questions and then in the case of The Hour of the Furnaces, just put a, a question on screen and give you a half hour to discuss it. So they're meant to be used as revolutionary organizing tools um, you know, in Argentina in that case um, during the military dictatorship. So that idea that a documentary can challenge you in your seat, not let you rest comfortably um, and make sure that you're asking yourself difficult questions throughout. Um, you know, this was an opportunity to do that more so than most films I've worked on because often there is this desire to reach as wide an audience as possible and transport the audience um, and in this case, I think it was more about can we confront the audience? And so that allowed us, especially when we were talking about sound design earlier, to make very abrupt choices where you go from a really full soundscape to just complete emptiness um, and to just show Norman thinking for long periods of time and have the soundscape suggest sort of where his mental landscape is. So it was, um, it was a real, you know, I was grateful for the opportunity to take some of those chances here. I'll add to that because I was thinking about the question of what other films or filmmakers inspired the process. And I actually, for, for me, I mean, there's so many great ones. And I was thinking of cin Cinema Verite, like the original from the early 60s, all of those films. But I think at the end of the day, we were trying to make a documentary that, a film that felt like Norman. So it was going towards the things that felt like him. Like, if he watched this, would he feel like that's him up there? Like, we're representing him. So that was like the guiding post. The, the, our guiding light throughout the process was, how can we distill down this material to feel like the, the truest point of Norman Mailer? I don't know if that makes sense, but. Yeah. We have a question in the back here. Uh, so this is a, uh, well, two questions, really. One, one for Jeff and one for Vicky. Uh, Jeff, now that you're in your mid-40s, uh, with uh, the, the, the amount of awards that you've won, and uh, you are now universally, I would say it's fair to say, based on this New York Times review, um, acknowledged as one of our generation's finest documentarians, um, do you feel at last that uh, people are able to look past your devastatingly good looks <laughs> to see the beauty of your mind and your talent and your hard work? I've never met that guy. <laughs> and Vicky, same question. <laughs> Can we just say thank you to that? Thank you, Buffalo. Thank you. Um, what was the most um, uh, meaningful kind of comments you got from family upon seeing the film when they when when you showed the final cut? Was there anyone that? Um, oh, it just meant so much that everybody thought it worked. Right. I mean, you know, th th first of all, we're delving into incredibly traumatic material for um, the entire family and difficult, uh, vulnerable reveals about relationships and. That stuff is incredible. It's so hard to talk about, even in a private setting, never mind to share with the world. And so um, we're just so grateful and honored that all of the siblings and Barbara um, are willing to take that leap of faith and say, I'm okay with the, the way you're telling this story and I'm open to the way the world will react to it. Um, that's an incredibly courageous choice that, that you all made. So thank you for accepting the film. I would like to add something to that. I uh, This is the first time I've seen it on the big screen, but I saw it on uh, my TV. And we live in, in Chile, in South America, and that's where I saw it. And uh, let me say, the first time I saw it, I've seen this is the third time I've seen it. The, the first time was in here in New York in my living room, 
and um, with John and a, a few siblings. And I was just for months. You know, I was just so um, I I was. I, I wouldn't say I was crying, but I was on the verge of tears. I was on the verge of, uh, I was so emotional and so moved, I couldn't, I couldn't speak. Then I saw it in Santiago for the second time and uh, with my children. And I saw things about dad that I hadn't seen. And I, and I understood things about him that I, didn't, that I hadn't understood. Uh, I think it's time, you know, being my age now, and not being a child, always, as, as Maggie said, always looking for a father who wasn't there, uh, even though he was at certain moments, certainly very much there, but uh, always wanting more. But now, with, you know, he's been dead for, for 17 years, uh, I'm much older, and looking at this movie and seeing the kind of man that he was, I really, um, I think that that's one of the incredible things about this movie, is that people who knew him so intimately, like I did, I understood things about him that I hadn't. So yeah, the answer to your question is that was the yeah. best thing. Wow. Wow. <laughs> um, no question in the back here. Uh, this is sort of a gloss on what was just said. Um, the, guys, the film works wonderfully well on a big screen. It's big. It's like an exploding Nova, whatever. <laughs> My astronomy is not too good, uh, but it, it's beautifully composed. A lot of it. Um, well, I saw it first um, on a 24-inch computer, and I felt a little cowed by it because uh, you get a lot of the uh, abrasiveness of Norman. Because as he gets older, he calms down, and and the cutting sort of changes a little bit too. Um, I just want to ask you why you left out his punchline. In town, bloody hall, he said, "I'll put my pathetic little Jewish dick on the table, and you come up here and spit at it." <laughs> but it's it's just a dildo, right? I don't think so. Yes, I've I've seen the film like five times. You said the dildo. Um, it's not the real one; it's a dildo. Oh. Um, so he wanted to you know pull the rug. We'll go back and open it up, David. We'll be it for you. <laughs> That's for the director's cut. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to wrap here and we can all move into the lobby and continue the conversation. I wanted to, um, I wanted to end with a comment and then just sort of hear what you guys had to say or thought about it. Um, all the children we see in this film are remarkably strong and forgiving and healthy and wise and with such a tumultuous, traumatic life experience and childhood, it made me think of their mothers and these six women, these six wives of Norman and uh, the women that raised these children. So I really wanted to commend those women. Uh, any thoughts about that, Susan? Absolutely. 